G'day, it's uh, Scott and Fu here from Heliops Magazine. We're just going to have a general discussion about the Black Hawk that's coming onto the civil market. We're seeing a flood of Black Hawks available and coming on the scene and Sikorsky have just caught up with the civil program. They've been really concentrating on their military delivery and sort of ignoring the civil market. But now that the military aircraft are being effectively dumped onto the civil market with the upgraded aircraft becoming available and at a reasonable price point, but it doesn't come without fish hooks. No, absolutely right. And you know the Black Hawk Exchange and Sales Team, the best program. Uh, there's potentially up to a thousand Black Hawks are eventually going to be made available for use in the US. There are some restrictions on them. Clearly, one of the biggest restrictions is their categorisation. You know they're in the restricted utility category, so there are limitations on who can fly in it. So it's okay if you're a state operator that you can put your farmen, you can put your troopers, you can put the people in. But what you're not going to be doing is, is a CEO is going to fancy rocking up at, as using a, a Black Hawk because he's VIP airplane, unless he happens to have a Black Hawk rating. He's not actually going to be allowed to be in it. I've been very fortunate through the magazine. Uh, I managed to fly some of the Black Hawks that have come onto the scene. What you're seeing is a secondary market of manufacturers such as Ace Aeronautics, such as Rogers and Kratos, who are taking the old alpha model Black Hawk and giving it a complete refresh, including upgrading it digitally. So the Ace Aero aircraft that flew last year with the fully integrated Garmin cockpit was probably one of the best cockpit integration systems I've ever actually flown in any helicopter, I mean, let alone it was in a Black Hawk. Absolutely superb, totally intuitive, totally supportable in the field, which is what operators need to have confidence in going forward. Now Sikorsky, as you quite rightly said, were behind the eight ball with Black Hawk. I think they have been surprised. They haven't had the same heritage. And Bell understand this market, having seen their Kiwas and their Hueys be transferred into the public sector. So Bell understand the market a little bit better. I think it caught Sikorsky out especially the number of third-party companies that suddenly sprung up to provide upgrades and modifications like Acero or to provide contractor support or to provide maintenance. Certainly, of course, they're trying to catch that back. They want to bring the Firehawk users back into the customer care community versus Korsky. but the individual customers are going to have to look at what that means getting back into an arrangement with the OEM because with an OEM inevitably comes increased costs. Yeah and I think in service support is something that's going to really dog the Black Hawk for the foreseeable future. I know that in the military since the logistics support is very difficult especially around engines in some parts exactly. so that's going to mean that's going to flow into the civil sector they may STC some different engines into the aircraft which then comes with its own supportability issues and orphan yeah. issues and don't forget why the army is dumping a models and moving to lima and mike fleet it's largely because of obsolescence and supportability of alpha models so what we're seeing is some organizations buying several airframes to support a couple of flyers the idea being you have access to extra engines, extra transmissions, extra rotables, bits and pieces, blades. And other companies like Ace Aero are offering an engine upgrade as part of their refresh. The challenge for companies doing upgrade though is to be able to get the aircraft out of the government through the auction, mm. do a refresh, fit a new avionics cockpit, fit new engines, upgrade it to a suitable standard and keep it below the ceiling of a brand new Black Hawk coming out of Connecticut. So there is this challenge, you've got to do that and you've got to do it in a way that your customer has confidence that mm. you are still doing a, a solid enough job and you're not going to undermine their confidence and push them back towards the OEM. Well, it's, you know, you've got to weigh out the direct operating cost against a lot of the other aircraft that are out there that actually have, in some cases, wider utility because you can use them for passenger transport, A to B, if especially it's being used for non-state personnel. So then if you look at it just being used for, say, firefighting, it's the ruggedness, it's the generally the supportability that's attractive, but yeah. then why wouldn't you go for something like a K-Max or I something think, that is a lifting I machine? I think it's basically, you know, if you think about what the Black Hawk was designed to do by the US Army, it was designed to carry uh, the same number of people as a Huey, uh, you know, there's no such thing as lack of imagination, is there? Right requirements. Um, it, you know, the requirement set was basically do everything a Huey does, but a bit faster and a bit more survivable. If you want to break it all the way down, that's what the UTAS requirement set was. Yeah, it's based on the platoon size. It's based on the platoon size. But, but what the Black Hawk does have, it has, it has significant excess power. So it, it can lift a significant underslung load. So in applications such as firefighting with the, with the Firehawk, with the plique water tanks underneath, like the heli tank we saw this morning, mm. it has significant grunt, mm. and that's and it has significant uh, ruggedness built into the aeroplane. So you are, yes, it's going to cost you more to operate than a, an equivalent civil aeroplane, purely because it has got 
extra meat in the construction. It is built to a more sturdy standard because it's battle worthy as well as just crash worthy. So you are carrying that weight around every time you fly it, but and that's going to affect your operating cost. But if you're buying the aeroplane out of the army for 800,000 bucks at auction, you're giving it to a company to spend a couple of million bucks giving it a refresh, mm. and you, you, know, you may be getting an aeroplane at about five to six million bucks, which is effectively zero times yeah. uh, and offers significant more flexibility in a purely lifting sense than something like an H145. And, you know, I think the other element that you can't underestimate is that it, it looks like a man's aircraft, right? And oh, it's so cool. People, it is cool. People really rate the fact that they're um, flying a Black Hawk and they, they like the look of it, they like it being around, and yeah. I, I don't think you can underestimate that part. Um, I, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to fly the Black Hawk three or four times. Uh, if there wasn't a Schnook available somewhere, I would take a Black Hawk <laughs> as second choice. Yeah, I had a fly of one in Australia, and I was really impressed with the aircraft, with speed, manoeuvrability, and payload available. Yeah, it's a great aeroplane.